Yo, what's up guys, Bajira here. Wanted to make an updated Arms Warrior PvP guide for you guys for patch 10.2.5. There are a few things that have changed since the last guide that we made. Um, most notably, we were experimenting with some Skull Splitter builds and having fun with it, but I wanted to experiment with some non-Skull Splitter builds, and I feel like I've actually been playing those way more and enjoying those way more. Um, I think Skull Splitter is cool. There's definitely like some neat stuff that you can do with uh, you know big bleed damage, but I do think that Arms Warrior flows pretty nicely without having that in the rotation, so I wanted to go over that with you guys too. Um, because again, there are a couple different builds, there's a couple different things that I've been experimenting with, so I just wanted to keep you guys up to date. First things first, let's have a look at the talents. So again, I don't think a ton has changed on this side of the tree, other than like sometimes you're gonna wanna play something that allows you to play like a Frothing Berserker into Wrecking Throw situation when you're fighting against Warlocks. So I do have one for Lock Slayer in particular. And it is moving a couple little talent points around. Um, most notably, like taking out of taking points out of Furious Blows and taking points out of maybe even, is it is it even Leeching Strikes coming out? Yeah. We, what we could do instead is we could probably keep Leeching Strikes in and just take out the movement speed or something like that if we really wanted to make sure that we had some Leech. Because um, you'll do that against some stuff. Like, you do kind of want Leech against, um, like, Demo Locks, but maybe you don't need a ton of Leech against, like, an Affliction Lock, things like that. Um, and a Demo Lock, you definitely don't really need a lot of movement speed, right? So... It even depends. Uh, one of the main things I'd like to do with guides like this is let you guys understand like w in what situations certain things are good, right? And kind of have an idea of what points are flex points. And so these things are flex points, these right here, like you, you don't need them. And so if you are going to make a change, then you could do like this, like a, like a demo lock, I think it would be like this, right? You don't need a lot of movement speed. You do want the leech and you're also gonna wanna be able to shatter their shield. So that'd be like the lock slayer, demo lock variant. And speaking of demo locks, I think this is one of the main things that changes in this side of the tree. There's some pretty interesting stuff. So right now for arms, I have like four different builds, right? I have like an AOE situation, a single target situation, a lock slayer in particular situation, then an RBG AOE, which is like RBGs obviously, but also like any situation where there's like pets in the game. And one, you're definitely not gonna be able to like single target un unhinged on something. And two, you actually can really benefit from some of the other things I'm doing with the build um, by making use of this talent right here. But anyway, this side of the tree is looking like this. If you needed flex points to go into Wrecking Throat, you would probably take them out of Furious Blows and Fast Footwork or Furious Blows and Leeching Strikes and go into those two. Over here though, um, there are some situations where you would even use things like Fatality. Like I think if you're fighting like a Lock Shadow Priest team where you're literally just fighting tanks, and they don't have a Paladin on their team, you can go something like Fatality to have some way of ending the game. Um, but even then, I don't play Fatality a ton, but it's not bad. Just just don't play it into like Paladins, because I'll just bop it off or whatever, right? Just something to consider. Anything where, anytime where somebody can just go fully immune, like an Ice Block, if I you know, remove all their debuffs, it'll, it'll take that off too, so keep that in mind. Um, but all this is pretty much the same. You're coming straight on down to get all these talents. Battle Lord, Bloodletting, of course. Two points in Bloodborne. All that's... All that stuff that you want. Um, but yeah, taking Fueled by Violence. Um, it does let you heal a little bit off of the damage dealt by Deep Wounds. And Deep Wounds is going to be dealing a little bit of damage because it kind of got unnerfed. And I don't know if you guys watched my Fury Guide. But in the Fury Guide, I discussed the way that I'm statting my character currently. And I guess we can do a brief aside to that. But again, we're going to talk about it in a second. Basically, we're min-maxing the stats so that we have enough haste without DRing stats and enough versatility without DRing stats to put everything else into mastery. So all of that taken into consideration, uh, you're sacrificing some versatility, which means that you're gonna be getting hit harder, you have less damage reduction, but it sort of can be offset a little bit by the fact that you're gonna be dealing more damage with mastery than you would with that same amount of versatility because there's no defensive component to mastery, but you are going to spend a talent point on Fueled by Violence to sort of make up for a little bit of that tankiness that you lose from damage reduction to get that back from Deep Wounds healing, right? Does that make sense? So you have, it's it's potentially more damage with still some sort of defensive layer. It's just instead of damage reduction, it's da it's healing. So you can take that into consideration. It, it will be less effective in dampening, but other than that, like for RBGs, this is like a no-brainer, I would say. Um, But... I think the talents that actually get flexed in this situation are 
Exhilarating blows for me can go into Fueled by Violence. I do like it when Mortal Strikes reset. It's just not like super reliable, right? You're always going to be getting healed when doing damage with Deep Wounds. And the Mortal Strike having a chance to proc it like a reset on itself is really fun, but sometimes uh, it's just not super reliable. And you don't need it because you always kind of have buttons to press anyway, I guess. Uh, this is one of those things that definitely changes frequently. If you're going to be hitting multiple targets all game, Improved Sweeping Strikes is kind of nuts. If not, then Strength of Arms is good for the single target. Extra Critical Strike chance is good. Um, critical Strike damage on low health enemies is good. Generating Rage is obviously good. But yeah, I mean, if, you can, if you're going to be hitting like two targets the entire game, that, this is crazy damage. It's pretty fun. So just take this talent if you're going to be cleaving reliably. If not, or if you're just really only focused on single target, take this. Um, and moving down into here, like again, if you can make use of Unhinged because you're going to be hitting like two targets all game only, then this could be good. If there's a bunch of pets or, you know, just random junk everywhere, just don't even bother to just play Hurricane. Or don't play Hurricane and just don't get any stacks off of this. But I think this is a pretty dang good talent because it buffs all of your bleeds and everything too. You you Blade Storm and you come out of the Blade Storm and just blast somebody with some burst from all the strength stack and whatnot. So I, I don't find myself not playing these talents very frequently. I do like um, Executioner's Precision. Because we do get the uh, the sudden death procs from our set bonus. So you, you do benefit from hitting a little bit harder mortal strikes, but it's just so nerfed. If you didn't want to play Executioner's Precision, and you definitely just don't have to, you could probably even drop this thing. Just uh, um, drop the extra crit damage if you wanted to, and just you know play Fatality or play something else. But play Exhilarating Blows instead of this, and then play Fatality, something like that. Just to not even worry about like, crit and the silliness that it... It's already nerfed and whatnot, but it's all right. It's okay, and it'll be good next season when we have our like mortal strike crit chance and damage buff a little bit with the set bonus. But yeah, you can move precision around. You can even move sharpened blades around a little bit into things like fatality or exhilarating blows. But I've mostly have moved my exhilarating blows talent into fueled by violence, and everything else is is sort of mandatory. You can experiment with like non uh um. Non execute builds. Um, and then in terms of PP talents, I really like Storm of Destruction. And I I would like never swap off of it. Arms Warrior has a lot of cool um, defensive utility, but yeah, this one's just too fun having a Blaze from being on a short cooldown. The snare is pretty funny too. I just like having Blaze from on a short cooldown. Well, I mean Sharpen Blade is like you play this like almost all the time. It's another it's just so powerful. Like reduced Healing by 50% for 4 seconds is still pretty dang good. It's a little bit nerfed. They made it a longer cooldown and a shorter duration, but it's still pretty good. But there are some times where you don't need it because you need other defensives to live. And then, of course, uh, Battlefield Commander is a lot of fun. Just giving your team all kinds of utility and doing more damage with, you know, to target from Thunderous Roar. And it takes 5% more damage from all sources, which I imagine includes your teammates, too. So it's like a big 5% debuff for, you know, everybody, which is kind of crazy. But... It is absolutely worth mentioning that War Banner is very good for disrupting CC chains by dropping a War Banner that makes the next the, the CCs hit your team half duration. So it's very good to use this like out of a CC, right? Like you know your 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 healer gets kidneyed, you see a sheep coming their way, you drop the banner, the sheep is half, right? That kind of thing. Duel is good for classes that just deal insano burst. To hopefully you can duel the target and, and make them either hit you. Because you're maybe some type, hope you know, maybe a little bit tankier, or you have a cooldown available. Your teammate doesn't, or it just reduces damage in general by sort of like making the target deal 50% less damage to everything except you. Disarm, obviously. Snapping a weapon away from another warrior, which is you know BM of course to play disarming other warriors. It's dishonorable, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Uh, disarming rogues is completely fine though. Um, so disarming like a subtlety rogue on their shadow dance, pretty brutal. Um, and then Safeguard is kind of a newer one. It's super nice. The Intervene has two charges. It's a little bit longer cooldown, but it gives your ally a 20% damage reduction for five seconds. Super nice. I love this talent. So I'll play this frequently. But if for the like the offensive choices, I think it's Battlefield, Commander, Storm of Destruction, Sharp, and Blade for me. Those are really, really fun. But the defensive ones, like War Banner, Duel, Disarm, uh, Safeguard, really nice. I don't really play the other ones too much, too much though. Um, but that's uh, pretty much a, a look at the talents. Again, I wanted to mention that... Not really playing Skull Splitter so much, and I can very quickly show you what I'm working with. So AOE PvP, these are situations like I think because I'm playing more Mastery now, I'm actually gonna keep doing this. Um, this is when I'm fighting 
you know, multiple targets, but maybe I, like the last time I, I played this build, I wasn't able to cleave, but maybe I'm fighting like a DK, right? And I don't, I'm never going to be able to unhinge, but I am going to be able to strength of arms. It doesn't really matter if I sweeping strikes like his pet or something like that. Um, but you could, you could. But that's this build. Um, with a fuel by violence. And then my sort of single target build would be um, when I'm only going to be hitting like one target. If I'm going to be like chasing around like a lock or a mage, then I don't mind exhilarating blows here, I guess. But again, we could probably take this out and put it, put fuel by violence there, like in every single build that I'm playing. But I'm not playing Warbreaker, I'm playing like blunt instruments. Uh, one of the things that's nice about this is like if a mage goes to blink and you Warbreaker and he blinks away and your Warbreaker just whiffs, that's really sad. But Blunt Instruments will make it so that, like, it's an ability that has to make contact. If he blinks away, then it's out of range and it won't go off, right? So, Blunt Instruments is, like, you can't miss your Warbreaker, which is cool. Um, but it also makes the Colossus Smash hit harder, and its duration is increased by 3 seconds. Now, if you were fighting, like, a, a melee cleave, and you can, like, always, Sweeping Strikes, Blunt Instruments, uh, you know, Warbreaker, both of not Warbreaker, but Colossus Smash, both of them, and get value, that's kind of cool, but... I don't know, I, th I think that I still probably just play Warbreaker into something like that. Um, but this is nice to have the longer duration and extra damage, and then I'll play Unhinged in a situation like that where you can Bladestorm and have Mortal Strikes pop off into the single target damage, that's good too. Again, if you're fighting like a, a Warlock, you might want to switch into Fatality from Executioners or from something else, right? Like you could even switch Exhilarating Blows into Fatality if you wanted to. I'm starting to I'm starting to feel like this is a talent that I might have to sort of experiment with not playing. Um, I like it, but again, there's some, some other things that could be situationally good. Again, like fueled by violence. You're not going to get as much value out of fueled by violence when you're only hitting one target, though. So I might mess with it. Then Lock Slayer. This is really all, all that happens with Lock Slayer is we are moving from. I might I might actually take this and put it over here, like I was talking about. Um, we are moving from the Leeching Strikes Furious Blows into a situation of uh, Frothing Berserker Wrecking Throw. Again, if I'm fighting a Demo Lock, it's going to look like this. If I'm fighting an Affliction Lock, I might move Leeching Strikes into Fast Footwork, but because uh, movement speed and chasing people down is really, really good. 5% Leech versus 5% speed. Not really that big of a deal either way, but um, I don't know. I might experiment with it. I'll think about it. I'll just do it here and see what I, I want to do later. I'm always messing with my stuff. And then, of course, we showed you the RBG talents, which are looking like this. Fast footwork with leeching strikes and furious blows. Not, not No choices that are tough to make there. Potentially sweeping strikes, all game, uh, hurricane, fueled by violence. That's what I'm looking with there. But again, with the Lock Slayer, you know what? For the Lock Slayer, what, what if we did? What if we were feeling a little crazy? What if we're feeling a little frisky and doing this? Doing some fatality action. Just gotta remember to change that fatality off when we are fighting any kind of lock with a paladin. But other than that, like get, getting these tank classes dead is good. Those caster tanks. Um, again, we went over this in great detail on the Fury Guide, but I'll talk about it again briefly. My stats, I've changed my gear around such that I have in PvP, like just a little bit over 30% haste and a little like 30% verse, like almost on the dot. And then I have a bunch of points extra into mastery. The reason I'm doing this is to min-max the stats a bit so that my haste gets up to the point where it DRs, but not very far over. And my versatility gets up to the point where it DRs, but not very much further. And then I put all the extra points into mastery. And since I don't have the legendary weapon yet, it looks like this. We've got the tier helmet. We've got haste verse neck with uh, mastery and haste gems. Primary stat mastery there. We actually crafted Haste Mastery Shoulders with Verdant Conduit, Haste Verse Cloak, Haste Mastery Chest, which is Tear. We got the Haste Verse Bracers, which are socketed. I guess my helmet's socketed too, with Mastery Haste, Mastery Haste there. The uh, Versatility Mastery Two-Hander with um, Sophic Devotion on there. You could do Haste too if you wanted to. We have Tear Gloves, Verse Mastery Belt, Tear Legs, Infurious War Boots, and we have Versatility Mastery Crafted Ring and Haste Mastery Crafted Ring. Again, this is to get Versatility off of my gear so that I could get a little bit more Mastery instead. And I use both uh, both on both like like um, damage trinkets because I'm human. I can just trinket with trinket stuns and just call it good and just do big damn. But certainly an argument to be made to just have a free action trinket there too. But again, yeah, this lets me have 
pretty pretty min maxed stats because stats do start to dr in terms of the percentage value you get from it after 30 percent you, you get less out of each point like 10 percent less so i'm just trying to min max the stats and see how it goes i mentioned this in the fury video as well but if you're gearing a new arms warrior i mean conquest is uncapped now so it doesn't really matter but um a, a conquest weapon could probably actually be one of your last purchases because the world pvp weapon is pretty cheap and it comes from you know two weeks of doing world pvp quests and it's still really good it's versatility mastery it's only six or sorry three eye level lower um in pvp so pretty good in terms of macros i think i've already gone over like all the macros that i really use for pvp in my previous dragonflight arms warrior macro video i have my uh D stance, die by the sword macro, casting uh, victory rush, and ignore pain. If you guys didn't have something like that, that's kind of fun. Um, this one's really neat. I like this one. To make it so that your dragon roar always goes off before avatar, you can do a cast sequence reset 90, a thunderous roar avatar. Now you're still going to want a button for, uh, for avatar because um, you might still want to blade some out of roots and things like that. But I like, use, I like using them at the same time. Sometimes splitting your cooldowns is important, though, so that people can't pop, like, one defensive cooldown and survive two of yours. Like, you can avatar them to get a cooldown, and then you can Thunderous Roar them later on. But I don't find Thunderous Roar to be, like, a super scary cooldown on its own. It does good damage, but it's not, nothing too crazy. I like popping big damn Thunderous Roar avatar on people. That's fun. But that's, like, that's like the one sort of interesting macro. Everything else is kind of standard, just, like, targeting macros and stuff. Um, which I think I covered in my other video. I could make a whole video about macros and make a whole video about talking about macros constantly. But I'll show you the, the general uh, DPS rotation here. Are we still in single target? Yeah, we don't want to do that. We want to be like AOE PvP, baby. Big pumping. So, with uh, Hurricane, doesn't sweeping strikes doesn't really matter, but it's some, I sometimes still will like, pre-pop it. Just so that like, you know, when you come out of Bladestorm, you're pumping. What the details? What's wrong with you? What are you doing that for me? Warbreaker. Then we hit the Dragon Roar, um, Avatar Macro, come out of that, wham in with the Sweeping Strikes. Uh, Mortal Strike, then Overpower, Mortal Strike, Overpower. Till then. And remember, whenever you get like a Sudden Death proc execute, it is going to spread your rend on everything. Because it puts a Thunderclap as part of that situation. So yeah, then you're just Mortal Striking and Overpowering and Execute procking, get a little Sweeping Strikes up when you can. And if you have literally no other buttons to press, which is rare, then you can uh, thunderclap people like this. Bladestorm's back up. Or Bladestorm is up, you can rip a Bladestorm to keep a... Uh... It's like the first... I guess I should have done it that way. Um, just to actually show you properly. Uh, the first the first Warbreaker I'm protecting with the Avatar Dragon Roar Bladestorm thing. The second Warbreaker uh, you could protect with your normal Bladestorm. But Bladestorm a lot of times is used to either like break CC or to prevent CC. But that's one of the things that's nice about arms. Is that you do have Bladestorm, so you can like Warbreaker and then uh, Bladestorm to avoid any kind of CC, which ends up feeling pretty nice. Like I said with Fury, you don't have that, and it feels kind of not nice. But um, the set bonus for Arms is pretty fun. You got the uh, increased chance to um, trigger sudden death, which is cool, and uh, you get that from you know Rend. But I don't, I don't think that having Rend on more targets procs more sudden death which is kind of troll and i also think that i mistakenly thought that skull splitter would increase the the like chance to render proc and i don't believe it does so that's another reason to swap off of that build but ren's damage is increased which is cool and then sudden death makes your execute do a thunderclap and put a little bleed on the target which is neat too so it's kind of like fun passive aoe but yeah charge in warbreaker dragon roar Avatar Bladestorm coming to that swanging. And if yeah, if you're not getting peeled, just keep sending. Um, you can Bladestorm during this first initial burst window, and that's fine too. But you could also save that second Bladestorm until uh, you have your second um, Warbreaker. That's fine too. Of course, in PvP, like there's going to be more going on than just like the, the optimal rotation. But if you guys are super new, understanding the basics of uh, Warbreaker... And then bursting during your Warbreaker is good. Hello! My baby's home, so it's time for me to wrap up this uh, Arms Warrior guide. But I uh, hope you guys got the basics with your 
talents, the different sort of builds that I have set up, which don't change a ton, just understanding the flex points and when you take them uh, against certain things is important. Uh, honor talents, they're pretty good. I like to play the offensive ones, but sometimes you got to play a little defense. In terms of stats, I'm sort of min-maxing to try to get... And again, this is these are world PV. These are PVE stats, not PvP stats. So I feel, I feel like I could have gone to Valdraken and showed you that, but we're chilling out here in the, uh, the Mist of Pandaria lands right now. Um, but yeah, the idea is to have like 30% haste, 30% verse, and then like just as much mastery as you can get just to hit hard, have your bleeds hit hard, and you're sort of filling in the gap of less versatility with uh, Fueled by Violence in a lot of these builds. Um, and then in terms of macros, there's not a lot has changed. I think I went over a lot of macros in the uh, video that I made for, what, 10.2 Arms Warrior PvP guide? And basically you can look at like any of my old macros videos guides to see just how to write a macro in general. Like just the basic like targeting macros, which really haven't changed over the years at all. Um, yeah, but I, I made some more, some cool ones for Fury, but yeah, these ones hopefully take you pretty far. Just uh, have like a nice smooth way to play. Sometimes macros actually are like a little bit newbie in terms of like this kind of thing, I think is actually a little bit newbie to always cast Thunderous Roar with Avatar, but at the same time, it's pretty cool because it's like, it makes it seem like it goes off in one global and protects your burst, right? The weakness is you actually have to wait a whole global to have the Dragon Roar go off. Whereas sometimes you're just going to want a Warbreaker and then rip an off global uh, Avatar Blade Storm to really catch somebody off guard on like a disarm timing or something like that. But so that's, that's a little bit newbie. And also things like uh, having uh, my overpower back road in with ignore pain is potentially a little bit newbie but it does feel pretty nice and so i'm i'm okay with like taking taking things and making it like a little bit like a little bit easier to to do so that you can pay attention to other things in the game instead of being like oh yeah am i pressing ignore pain like do I, have, do I have a comfortable button that i can just press and where it's like i just spam over power and ignore pain will we'll uh we'll go off pretty much on cooldown and just be up but I also have Ignore Pain and important buttons like Victory Rush, like Impending Victory. So like you can press that like right before you get CC'd and you'll have a heal and you'll have Ignore Pain ready. But other than that, sometimes it's just nice to make sure it's just rolling. So some things that could be optimized, but especially if you're like just, you know, wanting to just play the game and have things be a little bit like smooth with macros, I think that's kind of fun. And if you're new, then that's kind of nice too. Um, same thing with like having a Warbreaker macroed in with like uh, Sharpen Blade. It's potentially newbie because you're not splitting them up in a particular kind of way, so you don't use them um, as smooth. But at the same time, I think this thing got messed up, by the way. Um, is this even what I'm using right now? I don't even know if it is. Yeah. Um, it's just, I don't know. You can kind of do what you want. And uh, that's that, sometimes those kind of macros I think that are things that I think are cool and fun. So I'll share them with you guys. You can use them if you want to. Uh, but either way, let's wrap up the guide here. For now, hopefully it helps. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.